from friendly green dinosaurs to space princesses to fire-breathing turtle dragons, the Mario series has been home to some of the most memorable and iconic characters ever seen in gaming. This mustached Italian plumber is not only the most recognizable face in all of gaming, but is surrounded by one of the greatest supporting casts a hero could ask for, whether that be his friends, family, enemies, or whatever Birdo is. There aren't all too many terrible Mario characters who stick out as downright unlikable. With that said, there are some ridiculous and awful characters who have made their way to the Mushroom Kingdom throughout the years. Today, we're looking at the lesser characters in the long-running franchise to see why they stick out like a sore thumb. I'm Kyle with 1UP Binge, and these are the worst Super Mario characters, and why they suck. First off, let's establish some ground rules. As usual, we're looking at characters from the games, not outside sources like the manga, comic books, or cartoon series. If we did that, then pretty much every single character from the Super Mario Bros. movie would be on this list, and the gold medal would go to President Koopa. Secondly, we're basing this list off of consistent traits or attributes the characters have throughout the series, not necessarily characters who were out of character at certain points. Sure, Mario and Luigi look like fools based on the cutscenes of Hotel Mario, but that's a rare exception and not the rule. With that said, let's kick our Koopa shells into this list and start out with the least offensive of the worst characters and working our way down to the most egregious. Starting out our list, we have Foreman Spike. Thanks to the internet, we've seen a resurgence of love for many of Mario's forgotten adversaries such as War and Donkey Kong Jr. Foreman Spike, on the other hand, is an enemy of Mario's who no one we know of is clamoring for a return. This angry foreman was the head of the construction crew that Mario and Luigi found themselves working on in the NES game Wrecking Crew, as well as its Japan-only sequel, Wrecking Crew 98 on Super Famicom. Premiering in 1984, Foreman Spike is at least notable for being the first human enemy Mario faced in any of his games, predating Wario by about eight years. However, that's about the only thing worth noting about this character. Foreman Spike's actions in these games don't even make sense when you really think about it. I mean, the man hired Mario and Luigi to work on his wrecking crew, but instead of doing anything to help them, he tries to sabotage their efforts. What does Foreman Spike even get out of this? Is there some sort of compensation check he gets if one of his workers dies on the job? Foreman Spike is set to appear in the upcoming Super Mario Bros. movie, so maybe we will get an expanded look at his motivations there. As it stands, we think Foreman Spike had a few too many head injuries on the job and can't make coherent decisions. Hopping into our next spot, we have Mips the Rabbit. While traversing through the basement of Peach's Castle in Super Mario 64, Mario comes across a yellow rabbit who is randomly hopping around. After Mario chases him down and catches him, he awards the plumber with a power star which was given to him by Bowser. Why Bowser entrusted a random rabbit with one of the castle's power stars is beyond us. Mips feels really out of place amongst the cast of Super Mario 64, and looks more like a 3D prototype for a character in a Looney Tunes game. If you catch him, Mips says, I have a date, I cannot be late for tea. This is an obvious nod to Alice's adventures in Wonderland which would probably have been a better reference if Mips was a white rabbit. Chasing Mips is kind of fun the first time, albeit in a bit of an annoying way, but what lands him on the list is that after you retrieve 50 power stars, Mips once again appears in the basement for another chase. Not even the location of the chase changes, it's still in the castle basement. You can't tell us that this wasn't done to pad the game out to 120 stars. Mips never appeared in any other significant role, and was even left out of the game's remake, Super Mario 64 DS, in favor of other rabbits which unlocked minigames. So, so long Mips. We hope you got to your tea party on time, just don't come back. You've heard of Mario's brother, but have you heard of Mario's cousin? Probably not, because Stanley the Bugman didn't quite make the same cultural impact as Luigi. Appearing in Donkey Kong 3, Stanley the Bugman is the star of that game who works at the greenhouse and tries to keep Donkey Kong from attacking his plants. Stanley is environmentally friendly and cautious, and we respect him for that, but the reason he finds himself a spot on this list is we can't think of a reason for him to exist. Why isn't Mario the one guarding the greenhouse in this game? Sure, Mario's a plumber, 
but he's worked at many different occupations throughout the years, so it's not like we would question his presence here. In the Game & Watch Gallery 3 remake of Donkey Kong 3, Stanley's role was replaced by that of Yoshi, proving he's not even relevant enough to stay in a remake of his only game. Call it a hunch, but we don't think that we're going to be seeing Super Mario Cousins anytime soon, based on the reception to Stanley's character. Buzzing into our next spot, we have Queen Honey. A giant bee who is the queen of all honeybees, Queen Honey first appears in Super Mario Galaxy. When Mario meets her, she requests he help scratch the itches all over her body. That's weird enough in itself, and not really the most practical method of taking care of an itch. Thankfully, scratching the itches reveal they were the result of star chips, which have been attached to her body, so it wasn't a total waste. After this, Queen Honey does, well, pretty much nothing important throughout the rest of the game. She does appear again in Super Mario Galaxy 2, where she, again, has an itch and asks Mario to scratch it. If these were her only two appearances, we would probably forget about Queen Honey and not even think about her again. What really cements her position here is her appearance as a playable character in Mario Kart 7. I mean, why? This is the same game that omitted Waluigi as a playable character, but felt that this itchy Queen Bee was important enough to be part of the roster. Honestly, we hope this useless giant bug buzzes off from any future installments of the Mario Kart series. He's not quite the Koopalings, and he's not quite Bowser Jr., he's Koopa Kid. Koopa Kid initially is a henchman of Bowser's in Mario Party 1 through 4 antagonizing the players along with the Koopa King himself. In Mario Party 5 and 6, he becomes a playable character, only to be reduced to a villain once more in Mario Party 7 and Advance, and never heard from again after that. Technically, there are multiple Koopa Kids, so it may be cheating to include him as a single character, but since they all more or less act the same, we're willing to cheat on this one. Koopa Kid refers to Bowser as his father in Mario Party 4, so I guess this is another one of Bowser's children, and he is definitely the least defined or memorable compared to his other offspring. Koopa Kid never had any relevance outside of the Mario Party series, and even there, any role he would have had was replaced by Bowser Jr. after the GameCube era. We won't rank Koopa Kid any lower because he is kind of adorable, but this character is still a weird anomaly looking at how the series has carried on without him. Invading our next spot is Tatanga. While we made fun of Foreman Spike for not being the most interesting or well-defined villain in a Mario game, at least he's not Tatanga. A purple alien thing who travels to Sarasaland to capture Princess Daisy, Tatanga hypnotizes the members of Daisy's kingdom to fight Mario during the events of Super Mario Land. Once Mario knocks the kingdom members back into their senses, he and Tatanga fight in a sky dogfight leading to Tatanga's defeat. Little is known about what Tatanga is, where he came from, or why he wants to capture Princess Daisy in the first place. The lack of clarity or impact this final boss makes would be enough to land him a spot on this list. But Super Mario Land 2 adds insult to injury. Tatanga reappears as a minion of Wario's in that game, holding on to one of the six golden coins which Mario has to retrieve. The fact that Tatanga failed so hard at his duties that he was reduced from a final boss to a regular boss before never reappearing again tells us this humiliated alien won't be showing his face on Daisy's turf anytime soon. Next up on the list, we have the Miis. Created as avatar characters for games such as Wii Sports and Wii Play, the Miis eventually found their way into the Mario series when they showed up in games such as Mario Kart Wii and Mario Golf Super Rush. You might argue that the Miis aren't Mario characters, but that's exactly our point. They look so out of place here when contrasted with the cast of Mario characters. Later on, Mario Kart 8 would introduce characters from other series such as The Legend of Zelda and Animal Crossing among their playable roster. At least in those cases, the cartoony characters blend in well with the Mario series. The presence of the Miis, on the other hand, make us want to beat them up in a round of Wii Boxing. They would probably have fared better in their own Mii-based kart racer rather than invading the Mario universe with their blank, weird expressions. Speaking of characters who look out of place in the Mario universe, the human cast of Mario Golf 64 are up next. In Mario Kart 64, five of the 14 playable characters have never been seen before or since in the Mario universe. 
These five players are Plum, Charlie, Sunny, Harry, and Maple. Now, we're willing to let one character off the hook here. Plum is alright. She showed up again to explain golfing terms in Mario Golf for the Game Boy Color, and has even made cameos in Smash Bros. Melee and Ultimate, so we can at least say she had somewhat of an impact. However, Charlie, Sunny, Harry, and Maple have never appeared again, or even acknowledged in any way. Mario Golf 64 is considered to be one of the best and more memorable sports games in the Mario series. The fact that this cast often vanishes from the memories of many who have played it says a lot about their lasting impact. Undoubtedly the most prominent recurring character to make our list, Nabbit steals the next spot. First appearing in New Super Mario Bros. U, Nabbit is a thief who steals items from Toad houses, prompting the Mario Brothers and Toads to chase after him through levels. Nabbit has appeared in many subsequent Mario games, even occasionally as a playable character in games like New Super Luigi U. Unlike many other characters on this list, he definitely made an impact on the Mario series. But the question we can't wrap our heads around is why? Nabbit is an annoying pest whose role is totally inconsistent from game to game. His appearance is that of a small man in a purple rabbit suit, who for some reason has the same face mask as Bowser Jr. We're not sure why Nintendo feels Nabbit deserves to be pushed so hard in the Mario canon, since he isn't all that creative or interesting of a character anyway. Next up we have Mama Penguin from Super Mario 64. Everyone loves fetch quests, right? If so, then you're in luck because this lazy penguin is waiting for Mario to rescue her daughter, Tuxie, from the top of Cool Cool Mountain. For a mother who seems to be so concerned about her lost child, Mama Penguin doesn't seem very proactive in trying to find her daughter. Instead, she sits in a pool of cold water, waiting for someone else to do it for her. If Mario brings Mama Penguin the wrong penguin infant, then she will brush Mario off by saying that penguin looks nothing like her. I guess Mama Penguin doesn't care about lost children unless it's one of her own. If Mario picks up Tuxie after rescuing her, Mama Penguin will become angry and chase Mario around, showing she does at least care about her child. That said, if Mario drops Tuxie off of a cliff, and don't lie, we've all done this, Mama Penguin has no reaction. Next up we have the Piantas. Which one? All of them. Well, almost all of them. The sunglasses vendor is kinda cool. That said, every other Pianta who plays a major role in Super Mario Sunshine is either incredibly rude, manipulative, or a total mora. After the corrupt Piantas in Isle Delfino's legal system convict Mario for a crime he obviously didn't commit, he's thrown into prison and sentenced to clean up the entire island for them. Even after clearly chasing Shadow Mario around the island several times, right in front of their eyes, many of the Piantas stick to their story of Mario being a criminal, who is the mastermind behind this whole affair. The Isle Delfino police are the worst of the bunch, constantly accusing Mario of slacking off. That's pretty rich coming from two characters who barely move from their designated spots throughout the entire course of the game. If you ever travel to Isle Delfino, you might want to be cautious that there are no criminals that vaguely look like you in any way. Otherwise, the Piantas will use you as a scapegoat to fix their problem. He may not be getting the gold medal, but Gold Mario finds his way onto our list nonetheless. First appearing in New Super Mario Bros. 2, Gold Mario is a power-up which Mario receives at various points throughout the game. While most power-ups give Mario extra abilities like shooting fireballs or harnessing the power of flight, Gold Mario breaks the plumber's bank account by getting him a ton of extra coins. You might be wondering how a power-up of Mario could qualify as a character in and of itself. The answer is by cementing himself as a separate playable character from Mario in Mario Golf World Tour, as well as Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Mario Kart Tour. Gold Mario is kind of a lame power-up to begin with, but the fact he appears among the roster of Mario characters in other games is what makes him not only a lame power-up, but also a character in its own right. Personally, we would prefer to see some of Mario's other alternative costumes playable in the Mario spin-off games, such as Dr. Mario or even Shadow Mario. If Gold Mario stayed as a power-up in New Super Mario Bros. 2, then we probably would have chalked his presence up to a forgettable power-up, which is why we're not including Silver Luigi. Some of the newest characters in the Mario universe to grace our countdown, the Brutals, are up next. Making their debut appearance in Super Mario Odyssey on Switch, the Brutals are a gang of evil rabbits consisting of five distinct characters. Spewart, Topper, Rango, Harriet, and Madame Brood. 
Along with Mips and Nabbit, the Brutals prove once again that the weakest characters in the Mario games, for some reason, are often rabbit-themed. The Brutals are hired by Bowser to organize the wedding between the Koopa King and Princess Peach, whether Peach likes it or not. Some of the boss fights Mario engages in with the Brutals are admittedly fun, but it doesn't prevent us from categorizing them as lame characters in and of themselves. The Brutals feel like discount rabbit versions of the Koopalinks, who to be honest we would have rather have seen in Mario Odyssey. Even in a game where Mario finds himself encountering realistic dinosaurs, humans, and even anthropomorphic lion statues, the Brutals just feel extremely out of place. Maybe one day the Mario series will redeem itself with a really cool rabbit-themed character, but as it stands, the Brutals are not them. Narrowly avoiding the top three is MC Ballyhoo from Mario Party 8. As much as we can make fun of Koopa Kid for being a forgettable character that never left the Mario Party series, we can at least give that tiny turtle dragon credit for being a mainstay in those games for many years. MC Ballyhoo, on the other hand, made his one and only appearance in Mario Party 8, and has never appeared again. Looking at his character, we're not even sure what kind of thing MC Ballyhoo is supposed to be. This big-lipped humanoid creature wears a bow tie and a blue hat with a face that, for some reason, resembles Spongebob. We can at least say MC Ballyhoo is energetic and passionate about throwing parties, but personally, we really think his character designer wanted to have an early weekend based on his weird and confusing appearance. The bronze medal for worst Mario character goes to two characters appearing in the Mario spin-off series, Baby Daisy and Baby Rosalina. Generally speaking, the baby characters in Mario games are pretty contentious to begin with. Baby Mario's incessant crying in Yoshi's Island was enough to annoy most players to begin with. With that said, many of the baby characters at least serve higher purposes throughout the series, especially in Yoshi's Island DS and Mario and Luigi Partners in Time. Baby Daisy and Baby Rosalina, on the other hand, are lazy and cheap creations meant to fill a slot in the character rosters and their appearances. These characters are essentially palette swaps of Baby Peach. Why does Baby Daisy appear in so many spin-off titles, whereas Baby Wario and Baby Donkey Kong, who had much more significant roles, are barely heard from after Yoshi's Island DS? You might say it was to include more female representation in the game, but even from that perspective, most of these spin-offs omit already established female characters such as Pauline and Birdo, in favor of these lazily designed babies. And now that we say that out loud, we really hope that baby Pauline and baby Birdo don't join the roster anytime soon. The silver medal for worst Mario character has to go to Bowser's brother. If you remember our Bowser Forms Weak to Powerful video, we said at the beginning that the tale of Bowser's brother was a story for another day. Well, today is that day. Bowser has an extensive family tree, given the sheer amount of children the Koopa King accompanies himself with throughout the series. Undoubtedly, the most forgettable character in his family, though, would have to go to his long-forgotten sibling. Appearing in the Japanese version of Super Mario Bros. 2, known to us Westerners as Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels, Bowser's brother is a blue palette swap of Bowser, who appears in two levels in that game. He functions essentially the same as Bowser, breathing fire and throwing hammers at Mario and Luigi. The reason he ranks so low on our list is because this is the brother of the main antagonist of the Mario series, but is never seen or heard from again after his single appearance. As much shade as you can throw on Luigi for being too cowardly to join Mario on many adventures, he at least musters up the courage to help his brother anytime he can. Bowser's brother, on the other hand, was so humbled by his two defeats that he never showed his face amongst Bowser's army again. Even in the Super Mario All-Stars version of the Lost Levels, Bowser's brother was replaced by Bowser himself, in those instances, much like Stanley the Bugman, Bowser's brother is so insignificant that he was left out of the remake of his one and only appearance. We're willing to bet that Bowser and his brother didn't exactly have the strongest sibling relationship and likely aren't on speaking terms anymore. Finally, the pink gold medal for worst Mario character is awarded to none other than Pink Gold Peach. We commented before how Baby Daisy, Baby Rosalina, and Gold Mario come off as really lame and lazy additions to the Mario spin-off titles. Pink Gold Peach puts all those characters to shame, 
easily landing her spot as the weirdest and most unnecessary character ever found in the Mario canon. Premiering in Mario Kart 8, Pink Gold Peach is a heavyweight version of the iconic princess herself. What is Pink Gold Peach? Is she Peach with a power-up, or is she an evil imposter like Shadow Mario? Your guess is as good as ours. At least with Gold Mario, that character was established as a power-up in previous games. But Pink Gold Peach holds no such distinction. Will this lead to more random character variations in future Mario Kart installments? Is Purple Copper Waluigi planned for Mario Kart 9? We sure hope this is a one-off trend. But seeing how Pink Gold Peach rears her head in Mario Kart Tour and Mario Sports Superstars, Nintendo may get the bright idea to do this to other characters as well. But let us know in the comments section if you agree with our ranking. And who do you think is the worst Mario character? Let us know, and if you need a 1-up, make sure to hit that notification bell and binge more of our Mario and Nintendo videos. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.